episode 313. That's my biggest challenge is uh, in Africa, there's no safe information, like the old data that you guys have here, uh, Mitchell, uh, Motologic. I wish those uh, services could be, could be in our country. Uh, we could be a better text that way. But the problem is uh, techs are not trained to be able to fix this kind of vehicle is, uh, because of the technology and stuff that has changed. And um, that's what really drives me to come here to train and be able to fix all those vehicles back home. Welcome, aftermarketers, to Remarkable Results Radio. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Welcome, aftermarketers throughout North America and around the world to a discussion with shop owner Tarai Raymond Suera. Tarai and I sat down at my Vision 2018 studios and had a very interesting talk on ASE testing, vision training, and the new shop he's building. See, Tarai traveled about 9,000 miles one way to get to Kansas City. He's from Zimbabwe, Africa. Carm Capriato here with Remarkable Results Radio, the aftermarket's most important library of short audio books that inform, challenge, and help inspire your own path to remarkable results. And welcome to episode 313. This episode is brought to you by Federal Mogul Motor Parts and Garage Gurus. Looking for serious technical training and support, either online, on site, or on demand? Garage Gurus is everything you need to know. Find out more. FM Garage Gurus. Dot com. Hey, I'd love to hear from you. Tell me what's on your mind, who I need to be interviewing, and what topics you'd like covered in the Town Hall Academy. Email me at carm at remarkableresults.biz. Hey, many new listeners join each day, and a great way to listen is through all subscription apps. Please subscribe. Also, the website has so many ways to help you filter content just perfectly for you. The series filter, the word tag cloud, and the search function help you to narrow your focus. And if you'd like me to suggest any episode or series, as I do often, just send me a line. Your learning curve never sounded so good. Another big welcome to new Facebook friends of the podcast, Rod Schindler, Andy Polina, Steve Steeb, Ronald Alexander, and Jessica Lynn Tollefson. And new LinkedIn connections, Eric Tafts, Glenn Bernard, and Michael Colburn. Thanks for every social connection you've made to the podcast. And I have a convenient page with every social link at remarkableresults.biz slash social. Now meet Tarai Raymond Sawera. Tarai owns Truck Tech and General Services in Zimbabwe, Africa, where he employs 12 people. They work on anything that has wheels and an engine. Tarai is self-taught and will work on earth-moving equipment to lawnmowers. His passion is to bring automotive equipment back to life just as happy as they were when they were new from the factory. I met Tarai at Vision 2017, and we soon became friends. Tarai has made a big commitment to ASE certification and has used his trips to the U.S. in 2017 and recently in 2018 to take the ASE tests and earn certifications. In this episode, he tells you how he's done. In fact, he is the only technician in Africa who is ASE certified. Tarai traveled almost 18,000 miles round trip to go to Vision, and I caught up with him and asked him about his business, his family, training, and the new building he's building. Tarai's made a lot of great friends via Facebook groups in the U.S., and specifically, he calls Jim Morton a very influential friend. You'll find him a humble and grateful shop owner who just may have his daughter join the business. But he has some special education plans for her. You'll hear the story. Find an in-depth bio on Tarai Raymond Sawera at remarkableresults.biz slash E313. Now, listen to a slice of the automotive world from a completely different perspective. I'm in the Vision Studio with Tarai Raymond Sawera. Yes, Cap. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Uh, thank you for uh, having me here. Oh, I am just so happy to have you. I, I met you last year, follow you on Facebook, and uh, you're an amazing individual. Probably here at Vision, you've come, you're the person who has come the furthest. Tell my listeners where you're from. I'm from Zimbabwe in Africa, and uh, it, it actually took me uh, 35 hours to fly here. Yeah, that's how long it is. <laughs> is that a commitment to training, huh? Yeah, it is. 100%. Uh, in fact, it's 150%. You are passionate about training. Yes, I am, Cam. You can't get this kind of training in Africa? 
Ah, uh, there's nothing like this. Even closer to this, there's nothing really. So, you're here. It's our. I, I think it's our third day. Were you, were you here on day one? Yeah, I was here on day one. I I came first. I, I was the first year at I at Sheraton because I arrived on uh, on the twenty seventh of February. Okay, good, good. And I'm the last man who's going to leave this place anyway on the seventh of March. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, cool. You're sticking around. I'm sticking and you're around. sticking around because. You are going to be taking some ASE tests. That's correct. Now, what uh, ASE certificates do you already have? Uh, on the A series, I've got uh, the A1, um, I've got uh, the A6, the A8, the A9, and I also have um, the medium duty and heavy duty diesel, and also you have uh, what else? What else? I think that is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. What are you going for now? I'm going for my L2. Um, that's advanced level specialist for. For diesel, I forgot to tell you, I've got the L1, the advanced level specialist for automobile. So I'll be writing my L2 advanced level specialist, uh, medium duty and heavy duty. And uh, also be taking the L3, which is advanced level specialist for hybrid and electric vehicles. You're going to be tested out. You're going to be burned out after you take all those tests. Oh, wow. I know. Hey, what's really interesting, and, and someone, someone might say to me, uh, so... Okay, Tarai loves training. He is going for all his ASE tests. So what's the story here? And the story is, is there, you're a shop owner in Zimbabwe. Yes, I am. And you have how many employees? I've got 12 at the moment. 12 employees. And what I also know about Tarai is he is building a new shop. How many bays? 20 bays, you can call them here in the United States. But when we're back home, uh, we talk of square feet, uh, uh, square, square meters, in fact. Um, that would be 1,900 square meters. I don't know how you translate that. I don't either. Yeah, it's probably 60-something thousand square feet. Oh, my. Yeah, that's how big it is. Oh my! And it's really because you work on, there isn't anything in the automotive or in the truck field that you, don't, you do not work on. That's correct. Diesels, hybrid, gas, what else? Everything. Uh, that's it's got an engine. Uh, it's got wheels. <laughs> I love it if it's got an engine and wheels. So uh, anything that cuts the grass, right? Yeah, it yeah you can say that again. <laughs> I mean, you're the go-to. Are you the only shop within so many miles, or are you the most successful shop in so many miles? Yeah, they are uh, more like dealership. You can call them uh, for Toyota, um, Nissan, and uh, stuff like that. I think uh, what I'm doing is uh, different from anything else we have back home. Um, I mean, I'm going to be an independent shop, uh, which is going to be uh, working on all this, uh, the type of range, the big range, uh, like we say, from earth moving equipment, agriculture equipment, up to um, um, passenger vehicles. There isn't any shop like this back home which does that. Cool. I'm glad for you. Now, give me an idea of the the, the kind of models or cars that are that are being driven in Zimbabwe. For example, what's the number one selling car that you know the most popular car that comes in the shop? I would say uh, Mercedes. Um, the more Mercedes uh, uh, vehicles uh, in Zimbabwe, uh, I think uh, more than in a other country has. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a leading brand. Why is that? I mean, is, do they have a big dealer presence? Uh, do they want the German quality? Or is it pretty wealthy there? It's both uh, wealthy plus, uh, you know, everyone else, when they get money, they, they always dream of driving a Mercedes. Uh-huh. Uh, back home in Africa, that's uh, how special a Mercedes is in Africa. Got it. So it's status. It's status. <laughs> what do you drive? I drive a Mercedes. I've got an E Class uh, 2006. Uh, okay. Um, it's called the uh, CDI 270. I love diesel. Uh, it's a five cylinder. It's powerful. I love this fact that you, you love training. So tell me a little bit about running the business. Are you running the business or are you fixing the vehicles? I'm doing both. Um, yeah, I'm running business at the same time and uh, fixing vehicles at the same time. You love to fix the vehicles, though. I love. I eat, breathe. Uh, a dream or you can know it's just it's just fixing vehicles that's all i love to do here at vision you've taken some classes give me an idea of a couple of the classes that you signed up for that that really will have an impact that you'll take home the other one uh, that i loved so much was uh, a dean person uh it was a uh, toyota toyota and ford uh, hybrid vehicle diagnostics 
hybrids come in uh, around in Africa and uh, there isn't many at the moment but uh, it's coming because we're catching up with technology so uh, I'm preparing for that where'd you get your hybrid training I never had uh, hybrid training except here I just got it from uh, from uh, vision and uh, also buy books online uh, you know here in the states uh, that teaches you hybrid you know there's this interesting fact about you to rye you're the only tech in Africa who is certified by ASE for light-duty diesel, medium- and heavy-duty trucks, and advanced-level specialist L1. I mean, you're breaking barriers out there. It's amazing. And is it because no one else has the passion that you have, or are there just very limited number of techs in Zimbabwe? There are a number of techs, but I, I believe the biggest factor is uh, to finance the training is the challenge and also the um, to know where the, the proper training is i was fortunate enough to to end up being at version uh, got it and, and, and i think it was wasn't it last year you took your first series of ases yeah i did and you flew from uh here in kansas city to washington that's correct and, and yeah it's a great it's a great story what a commitment <laughs> and uh and then of course you went back home with these new certificates wow the certifications wow <laughs> So if you're feeling, man. I'm talking to Bud Houston, a technical product specialist with Federal Mogul Motor Parts. Do you actually put products in the hands of the technicians? Yes, absolutely. Anytime there's new product introduced, perhaps a new problem solver or a new technology, uh, we keep that stuff on the van just because uh, their local parts supplier may not have it available. And we think it's important to show them what's coming and then seeing the part is really especially with the new OEX seeing the part and touching the part is something that that changes perspective rather than just a piece of paper with a picture of the part okay so you put an OEX pad into the hand of a technician and you've done this I'm sure hundreds of times what do you see on their face when they see it you can you can tell they get it you know in in, in our industry there's technology that that we use all the time that you look at and you're like, that just doesn't make sense to me. I'm going to take your word that it works. You put an OEX brake pad in somebody's hand and I just ask the question, why does this look so weird? And they're like, I bet it's to make it cool. They get it as soon as you put it in their hand. So technicians holding your product and listening to your presentation, do you ever see the light bulbs go up? They raise their hand and says, boy, I've got a great idea for you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Not only do, do does that happen, Every time I'm with a group of guys, I solicit ideas. I'm like, listen, a lot of the stuff that I've shared with you originated in a bay somewhere where the technician said, you know what, if you could do this, it would be really cool. And so the stuff that I get, I send up you know, uh, to our engineering team and say, hey, could we do something like this? And there's things in, in the works and there's some things that came out recently that, that originated in, hey, if you could do this, it would be helpful because at the end of the day, you know, I think Federal Mogul is known in, in every line to be a problem solver and not just solving a problem, but making an installation easier as well. Federal Mogul Motor Parks' Garage Gurus is your go-to source for the vehicle training, technology, and answers you need to keep your next job on track. On site, online, or on demand, the gurus are here to help keep your business and your career on the road to success. Visit fmgarageguru.com. <laughs> So you have a 20-year-old daughter who wants to get in the business. Wow, yeah, that's get me uh, excited big time. Because uh, um, I didn't want to push her to do what I do. But uh, one day she just said, uh, probably she was motivated when I, I came here for the first time at Vision. And uh, when I took my AC test, I, I probably that impacted her. And uh, she just told me, Dad, I just want to do what you do. Because uh, I found out if I read this stuff, uh, it sticks in my in my brain easily. So... Ah, so she's doing that it's now. in the genes. It's in the genes. You can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> so give me an idea as a dad, what kind of career path or education do you believe she needs to have to not only become a great technician, but to end up joining the business? What are you, what are you helping her with? We're working on something uh, with my good bud, uh, Rick Escalamba. He lives in California. We met uh, at Vision. And we became friends and uh, working on something that uh, she's supposed to to go to the United States or to come to the United States. Is that we're speaking? I mean, the United States. All right. right. Yeah. Um, she, she'll be going to California if all goes well. Uh, she'll be going for 
for training as well as working in a workshop and to see exactly what happens in a successful workshop. Hopefully she can implement that to our new business. Is Rick trying to get her in Skyline? Yeah, I believe so. Skyline. Yes, yeah, that's, Skyline. That's where, he, that's where he is. He's a part-time instructor. That was his school. Yeah, I believe so. There's been so many people that have reached out to you, and Jim Morton was one of them. Wow, wow, wow. And, and he's not here. It's unfortunate uh, Jim is not here, but uh, I'm here at the same time because he's recovering from whatever the ailment he's got. Um, and I was so happy yesterday when I heard that uh, he was given a, an award for, for... The Educator of the, the Year. Yeah, Educator of the Year. So you're married, own a company. Uh, any other children besides your 20-year-old daughter? Yeah, I do. I've got uh, um, another daughter uh, called uh, Jaden, okay. and I've got another son called Jerome. Jaden is uh, 10 and Jerome is 7. And I've got the little one. Um, he's one year in some days. He was born on the 2nd of February last year. Wow, congrats. Uh, when I was just about to come to Vision, uh, he's called uh, Diesel. And his nickname is Pico. His name is Diesel. Yeah. I love it. I wonder why he was named that. <laughs> yeah, it's all because uh, uh, from Rudolf Diesel, uh, the guy who patented Diesel engines. And uh, also I, I gave him a nickname called Pico because I love Pico's cop so much. Oh, God, and, uh, I love it. Oh, my God. Talk <laughs> about being totally engrossed in the automotive. <laughs> Thank wow. you. The biggest piece of equipment that you ever worked on? Yeah, I work on um, motor graders, excavators. Uh, um, yeah, that's that's basically all all the earth moving equipment that you can think of. Uh, that's yeah, I work on them back home. Help me understand the economy in Zimbabwe. Uh, you know what, what what's going on there? People earning a lot of money. The employment's great. Uh, the employment is not great. I believe we are we are five percent or less uh, in terms of uh, employment uh, rate. Most of the people in Zimbabwe are not employed, they are self-employed. Okay. Uh, you kind of start your own thing. The government gave us an opportunity. But at the same time, it's because of the economy which went down. We are under sanctions, as you know. I hate talking about politics, but uh, this is what's going on. We are under sanctions for, it's been a long time. I, I believe from 2000 uh, up to now. But uh, we've got a new president, uh, and um, I believe uh, we're going for elections in July. Hopefully things will be starting to change for the better. Good for you, and I hope that works for you. you. You know what I find interesting is Vision last year was your first trip out of Zimbabwe to come to the U.S. to get training. Ah. So I can't help but think, where did all your training come from to get you as far as you are here in life? Were you just, I'll take it apart and figure it out kind of guy? Yeah, I'll say that, uh, Kama. I, I never received te- uh, training, in fact. I've never, I've never been trained. I've never been in a class. My first class was uh, in, at Vision last year. Other than that, I just figured out. Uh, I'm a, uh, it's been 22 years now since I've been a tech. You know, I used to tear things apart, gearboxes. We'll call them transmission now when you're a professional, but we used to call them gearboxes and devs. Um, that's how I learned pretty, yeah, I had figured out. Tarai, how much are you using the internet to help you in your learning curve? That's my go-to, um, but it's not reliable. I realized uh, three years ago when I decided to turn professional that uh, going on um, YouTube and all that is not really, really uh, how a professional should go about it. That's, that's my biggest challenge is uh, in Africa there's no safe information like the old data that you guys have here, uh, Mitchell, uh, Motologic. I wish those uh, services could be, could be in our country. Uh, we could be a better text that way. When you go out onto the expo floor, what shiny objects do you see out there that you want? The wheel balancers, uh, the wheel alignment, uh, all this big equipment. Uh, I wish I can have this. You have it now, but you, you would like to buy the newest, latest. Yeah, yeah, I do. I uh, was... I did a consultation with uh, with Hunter, the company. We are working on something like um, they will want to find out if it's possible for them to be exporting to Zimbabwe. Then I'll be hearing from them hopefully soon before I leave here. Well, I mean, that, that's a great little mission to come here to figure out how you can get buy and get products shipped. Now, are some of the sanctions in the country about imports? Uh, there are no sanctions really in Zimbabwe. Um, 
there's no limit that uh with what you can import really in terms of anything that has got uh to do with uh the development of the infrastructure government supports that as long as you bring in something that will will better the economy or better the 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 country when you leave here what's your next class my next class will be uh Cummins uh, 5.5.9 uh, uh with um Wally or something. I bet you. <laughs> I bet when you saw the heavy duty training piece in Vision this year, you got all excited. Wow, extremely excited, man! I love this, man. That's what I live for, man. You live for the big stuff, huh? Yeah, I live for the big stuff. So you're feeding twelve mouths. You, you, you've got a great enough business to to hire. Give me an idea. I guess I'm curious very much what an average income level would be in Zimbabwe. It's no more than a thousand U.S. dollars because we use uh, we use U.S. dollars now. Okay. Uh, since uh, 2012, I believe. So, yeah, I guess around one thousand U.S. dollars per year. Minus. Per year. No, per month. Per month. Yeah. Okay. And that would be a top technician. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Like I said, it's just a five percent employment rate in Zimbabwe. So they are awfully darn lucky to be working. Yeah. Very lucky. And, and remember, uh, Tarai said it was 5% employment. In our area here, it would sound like 5% unemployment, but it's wow. absolutely the, the wow. other way around. Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow is right. Wow is right. If there's only 5% employment, where do you get all your business from? The 95%, uh, probably 80% of that are business people. Uh, they, okay. they do their own uh, okay. stuff. Uh, they run companies and stuff like that. Uh, is it like that every... Home has one car, two cars, no cars, and, and, and that's why you have to work on all all vehicles. Yeah, in Zimbabwe, I would say uh, there are more more cars than people. I believe uh, probably every household will have uh, a minimum of two, something like that. Yeah, there are so many, many, many vehicles in Zimbabwe. But the problem is, uh, techs are not trained to be able to fix this kind of vehicle, is, uh, because of the technology and stuff that has changed. And um, that's what really drives me to come here to train and be able to fix all those vehicles back home. You're building a competitive advantage in your marketplace. I mean, if there's no other training available and you got to travel 35 hours to get it and you come back and you could fix people's cars, you've got to be almost it. I mean, there's no other place to go. You can say that Truck again. Tech and General Services. That's the name of your company. Yeah, Truck Tech and General Services. Yeah. Where else do you go? Uh, because um, I'm not like a known, known like a here at Version. Um, uh, you know, I don't know because of marketing thing or become or, or just because people are negligent or uh, maybe I don't know. I don't know how to put that. But uh, but you're the go-to source for any any car repair, any any like you say in, industrial engines. You do work on generators. Yeah, I do work on pretty much uh, everything. In fact, uh, my biggest customer is the government. Yeah, I I, I do fix um, graders and stuff uh, for the Minister of uh, Road, Minister of Transport, Department of Roads. Wow, how many people live in Zimbabwe? I believe we are around fourteen million now. That's a lot. It is, and it's the size of what? Which one of our states, for example? I'm not so sure about the size of the states. Yeah, but uh, probably uh, how big is Virginia? I have no idea. Yeah, you can you see think that about Virginia. <laughs> Virginia in size with 14 million people. Yeah, yeah I believe that uh, that would be. Maybe Virginia is a little bit bigger because it's not that big. Zimbabwe, you can actually. Um, when I'm flying from Zimbabwe to South Africa, it's, up, it's just one hour, 45 minutes. Tarai brought me this most incredible plaque. Wow! Carved in ebony wood. I, I can't tell you that just, just wonderful. And what's on it? The big five that we have uh, back home, uh, the, the leopard, um, the buffalo, uh, the lion, um, what's that, uh, the elephant, yeah, the big five. We've got all the, the, uh, the wild animals. And the, and the rhino. It, it's a, just the a rhino. Be- beautifully <laughs> carved piece in, a, in, a, in an ebony wood. I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm so grateful for it. That is nice. And um, so the plans are build a shop. When's it going to be ready? By August this year. August of this year. Yeah. Did you design it yourself? 
yeah, I'm, I'm, I do my own stuff. Uh, like um, I've got the standards that I, I, I'm expecting. I'm getting some ideas here from uh, my fellow techs and uh, my fellow uh, company owners here in the States. And, uh, and you stay in touch with everyone U.S.-based through Facebook. Yeah. It is, it is amazing. It, it is just truly amazing to see how Facebook shortens our, our world. You can say that again, Kyle. Wow. And what are you talking about in social media with your peers? We're basically talking about how to fix cars. Um, that's, that's basically most of it. Um, I, don't, I don't have friends other than the um, takes on Facebook. On Facebook, in fact, yeah. Yeah. I'm not that guy who, who's got um, extra time to do other, f- other stuff other than fixing vehicles or talking about vehicles. Uh, yeah, that's what you're I love committed. To do. I mean, this is your world. This is your life. This is your hobby. This is everything. That's what I love to do every single day. Nothing like having someone so committed. <laughs> Thank you, Cap. Tarai Raymond Sawera. You did from right. Zimbabwe. Thank you. Thanks for being here, man. I appreciate it, Cap. Thank you, Tarai, for your story of life as a shop owner in Zimbabwe. Find an in-depth bio on Tarai Raymond Sawera at remarkableresults.biz. Slash E313. It's so interesting to hear about the service repair business and the economy in Tarai's country of Zimbabwe. I'm sure you enjoyed his story. If you have any questions or comments, email me at carm at remarkableresults.biz or head over to the contact page on the website. Please share this podcast with your friends. Interesting story, wasn't it? Hey, thanks. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time... 